Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. But right now I'm Mr. Politics. And today is a great day. Sanity at last. Sanity. Uh, it feels like giant uh, fans have been set up and they're blowing these toxic fumes, these toxic clouds away. And you can see the sky and the sun shining again. It is so great. And, you know, the last few videos I've been trying to speak to my friends on the right to bring them toward the middle, toward what I view as sanity, as accepting certain things. And and again, I'm, I clearly can't change people's minds. That's a shame. I regret that. But you might just want to ask yourself, does it make sense that these people are pedophiles and Satanists? No. Joe Biden was vice president for eight years, and we're not all going to the Church of Satan right now. So, you know, I think that what's going to happen now is we're going to have a president who cares more about the people than about himself. I think having a black female VP is terrific. I think everyone in this country who is eligible to vote should be allowed an easy way to vote and allowed for their vote to have equal weight as everyone else's. I think that uh, the climate is in danger and we need to start taking major steps so that we can survive and our children can survive. Uh, I think that everything he said in his inauguration speech, I, th I think he meant it. And I cannot wait to see all of this happen. Uh, we're going to have security that protects our nation's capital rather than destroys it. Uh, we're going to have... I, it's just going to be so wonderful just to have normalcy again. Just to not have to watch the news throughout the day to see what atrocity, what new craziness has, has erupted. And, and we came so close to the brink this time, closest in my entire lifetime. I mean, I lived through the Vietnam War and Watergate and all of these things, these terrible things, and I never had felt as worried as I felt with this election that we were gonna plunge over the precipice into a dictatorship. I just saw how clearly that could happen, but it didn't, the good guys won, the good guys won. And so now what's going to happen is, you know, we'll, we'll have a sane government fighting this, uh, this, this terrible disease that's killed 400,000 of us. And, and again, you know, just to wear masks and not have it be a political issue, just to get vaccination and, and, and have our nation recover, to have people who, who need money, who need, to, who need to pay the rent, to get what they need so their families can stay in their homes and they can have food on their tables. This is what government is supposed to do that we are all supposed to be part of a unified whole, as, as Joe Biden said. But more than that, government is the servant of the people. It is not the servant of the 1% of the 1%. And, and particularly if they don't pay taxes. If they're not paying taxes, they're not buying in. And so they should neither have a say, nor should they be able to um, buy politicians. So hopefully they'll be... Um, uh, you know, political reform. Hopefully we can get rid of the Electoral College or change it so at least it reflects the, uh, the, the will of the people, the majority vote. Um, there are many things to be done, many changes to be made, but mostly it was the America of, of I'll say it, I'll say, I'm going to say it in the positives. The America I love is the America where anyone can be an American. They can look like me. They can look like um, Martin Luther King. They can look like you know, someone from Asia. I mean, there's, there was a guy who came to do my plumbing and his name was Vladimir. And he had a thick Russian accent. So I was envisioning this middle-aged guy, this heavy set guy, he was stubble, uh, Vladimir, the, the plumber. And this young guy shows up and he's Korean. And I say, well, what's the deal with Vladimir and the, and the accent? And he said, my family uh, in the time of the Tsar, in the time of the Crimean War, moved to Russia. And I am the first one of my family to come here. Well, if that guy decides to, to go for his citizenship, he's an American. With his Russian accent, with his Korean lineage, he's an American. And, and an American can be named Mark or Vladimir, or you name it, you name it, or Kamala, Kamala. <laughs> and uh, and it, it, all, it all works. My friend Norman Corwin, who wrote um, On a Note of Triumph, wrote that at the end of World War II in Europe to say that we as Americans, democracy has defeated fascism. That, that, that there are forces of dark and light. And for me, the forces of darkness are the forces of violence, the forces, uh, the forces of exclusion, the forces of lies, the forces of fear. You can either be, be, be driven by fear or by hope, by, by a positive creative energy, by love, by compassion. And um, I, you know, I, I very strongly believe in active compassion, meaning that if you see someone in trouble, you help them. And you take care of yourself, you make sure you have a roof over your head, money to pay your bills, food on the table, your medical care, all of that. You make sure that you're okay and that people you love are okay. 
But if someone else is suffering, you don't turn a blind eye. You know, if someone else is getting a raw deal, you don't say, well, that's okay as long as I've got mine. There's, there's enough for everyone in this wonderful country. There is. But we have to make sure that everyone is getting what they need. And, you know, so, so for those of you who've lived the last four years in darker and darker and darker places and felt more and more anger, give this guy a chance. I mean, you know, Dave Chappelle went on Saturday Night Live when Trump was elected and said, give him a chance. And that was fair. And he drew a lot of heat for that. But that was fair. And so we're all Americans. We, we love this country. And if you don't love this country, leave. But we all recognize that it's not perfect. And it's not going to be everything any one of us would want. But I think the more of us who are invited to the party, the more of us who can participate, the more of us who can live the American dream, which is a dream of inclusivity and growth and joy and love, the better, you know? And uh, so, you know, this is, this is an, going to be an amazing time. And if you don't believe in COVID, get your shot anywhere, wear your mask. And, uh, and if you do, if loved ones have died or been very ill, or if you have, um, better days are ahead. Better days are ahead. Can you imagine just waking up each day to sanity, to truth? You know, ah, it's going to be a, such a blessed time. I mean, I, you know, Joe Biden would not have been my first choice for president, but he has risen to the task. His appointing Kamala Harris has been inspired. And I think they're going to do a great job. I think the days ahead are going to be very, very, very good because he is not looking for enemies. He is looking for um, partners to work with him. You know, it's, it's great when, when John Kennedy said, think not what your country can do for you, but think what you can do for your country. And when they created the Peace Corps, the notion was that we can all do our part to make things better for all of us. And there's a cleansing feeling that comes of a generous spirit you know, and, and uh, you know, just recognize this country is good for a reason, that democracy is good for a reason. And if you believe things, I can't, I can't help with what you believe. All I can help with is what we all do. So if you can do something kind today for your neighbor, for someone on the street, I mean, you know, again, look at the people who normally you look away from. Uh, wish them a happy day, wish them a good day. Um, you know, the phrase that you never hear anymore is neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Good to see you, neighbor. You know, say it with no irony. You know, we're all neighbors. We're all citizens. And, um, and I, for one, love this country. You know, I've mentioned in other commentaries that my family came here. My grandfather came here and went right by the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, all that stuff. And, um, and he thrived here. My family thrived here. And uh, I'm the first writer in my family. I'm the first, uh, you know, person to earn the kind of money I've earned, and uh, and and that was on the on the shoulders of the of those who came here, those who raised my my parents and raised me. And um, you know, I love America. I love the American dream. It's a real dream. The words on the Statue of Liberty are not words of exclusion. They're words of welcome. And the fact that it talks about the huddled mass, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, it is, an, it is not an invitation to those who are doing fine. If they're doing fine, they'll stay where they are. It's an invitation to those who are suffering, to those who are longing just for a fair break. And I think anyone who says that anyone doesn't deserve to be an American, anyone doesn't because of their race, their religion, you know, this is not a Christian country. You're allowed to be a Christian here freely, whether you're a Catholic or a Presbyterian or a Baptist. You know, Mormons can be here, Jews, Muslims, atheists, agnostics. That's great. Our div diversity gives us power. It gives us an advantage. I don't want to live where everyone looks the same. I don't want to go to Sweden where everyone's blonde and blue-eyed. I mean, I'd like to visit it. But, um, but there's a vibrancy to um, complexity. And, uh, and I, lo I love that. I love that. So for me, this is a day to celebrate. Elaine and I went and had a very nice breakfast of, uh, of, of a Borsain omelet and, uh, and a banana and coconut, uh, and macadamia nut pancakes. And, you know, we ate it in our car, but it was great. And, <laughs> but, um, but the reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this video is simply to say to everyone, look, come with a good heart, 
We don't have to get into political arguments. We don't have to, you know, do any of that stuff. Do you want America to be physically healthy? Do you want your family and those you love to have medical care? Do you want to not run out of money and worry what your, what your next day is going to be if you have to re live in a cardboard box? You know, do you want people who are mentally ill to get the, the, the care they need? Do you, and not be afraid that they're gonna get shot by cops? You know, there's a, there's a lot of good in this nation, but I think, I think if we just put down the megaphone and, and pick up, you know, whatever. I was gonna say a flower, but fuck, that's, that's you know, no, don't, don't, don't pick up a flower. Leave the flowers where they are. Um, but an open hand, an open hand, you know, a smile. You know, that's how, and, and, and asking people, how are you doing? You know, how are you doing? You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day here in California. And I think it's going to be a really good four years ahead. Um, you know, we don't have to look back. We can look forward. And all of the, the divisions, uh, it's not going to heal everything. It's not going to make America perfect. It's a more perfect union, not a perfect union, as they said on the radio the other day. Um, but I'm 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 just thrilled, and I cannot wait to um, to see what the next month and and the next year brings. Just to be able to go out eventually and not have to wear a mask, not have to worry about you know the COVID <laughs> virus. To just um, you know, we kept all our people on salary. We kept our studio going. Uh, kind people throughout the world gave us the money to continue our dream. And uh, I'm very, very grateful and very blessed. And Elaine has been by my side this whole time. Um, and she's the best part of every day. So anyway, that's, that's it for now. Um, I, think, uh, I think love has triumphed over fear. And I think that's always a good day when that happens. So that's it for now. And um, talk to you soon. And thanks for everything, guys. And, I, and, and by the way, one last thing. For those who've said, you know, although we disagree politically, we have the wonderful world of science fiction and, and, and keep going, Mark. I'm very grateful for those messages. Again, that's part of America, okay? We can make things that delight each other. We can make things that bring entertainment, bring joy, bring a lesson into the, into the world. We can do things um, and not be divided in that way. So I love science fiction, and you guys are a big part of my world. I'm grateful for all of you, and uh, and kindness is is much better than uh, the opposite. <laughs> so that's it. We'll talk soon. Thanks for everything. And um, although I myself am, I guess, an agnostic, I'll again say God bless America and God bless all of us. Take care. <laughs>